welcome to the inevitable return to butter. I'm your host, Critical, and my co-host, Wheezy Butter. How's it going today? Yeah, man, it's, you know what I'm saying? The grass is getting cut. Uh, the sun is out. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Kids making noise outside. That's good, that's good because that means life is, is, is still moving and grooving. There's a lot going on in the world today, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I've been seeing some stuff like uh, the top... Uh, uh, it, that's why it's no topic today. It's just uh, the world is the topic today. How about that? The world, yeah. We'll we'll jump around on a, a few subjects pertaining to the world. And the thing that's been on on me most, and what I've been reflecting on, is how we allow ourselves to make excuses and block our own progress. You know, you talk to me about it. You know, in in it's deep because this is what holds everybody back. Like they were talking about the children of Israel, you know, when they when they got across the, the river and then they were in the wilderness wandering for all that time because they wasn't ready to go to the promised land. And then when the spies were sent over to see what it was like, they come back and give a negative report. Talking about his giants over there. We can't win, this, that, and the other. And they put that stipulation on themselves, that stigma on themselves, that we can't win. we too small. They're giants. So now you're defeated already. Once you feed yourself that negative, that I cannot do this, I can't. If I keep telling myself I cannot do something, I never will do it. Right. That's the bottom line. So, you know, it's sad that we're called into this. I was listening to those other brothers like 19 Keys and some other ones and they were talking about people getting together and, and building our own. It's very difficult for us to build our own when we don't have no confidence in ourselves and we use excuses. Yeah, we gotta stop using excuses, man. We gotta stop using excuses. And can't be afraid. What are we afraid of? If you ever failed before, you shouldn't be afraid of failure. Because you got over it. You failed, but you got over it. So that means keep on pushing. You can do you can do better. You learn from your mistakes. Failure, uh, success knows failure very well. Because the average individual that's successful, they failed a lot of times before they became successful. Like that one one uh quote they always make about the guy who invented the light bulb. When they say, well, you fail uh, 99 times or 999 times. You say, no, I just learned 99 ways of not how, how not to make a light bulb. Right. <laughs> That's the way he looked at it. Excuses, excuses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> excuses. Yeah, man, you can't be out having excuses, you know. The world going crazy right now. What's up with that? Uh, have you been following that thing with uh with Joe Biden? What what's uh I, I really ne I I really didn't dig into it this week because I've been on a lot of knucklehead stuff. I can't lie about uh you know paying attention to all the stuff that's going on in in the world with our brothers over in the rap world and everything. You know what I'm saying? Not to not not to uh to switch over to that, but uh I was paying attention to uh I, I where I saw a couple of glimpses of uh. Biden, they found something in his house. What are, what are they talking about? Well, Biden did what most politicians do. He took work home. You know, most people take work home. And apparently, he just forgot the, the climate that was created by them. They created the climate of going to to a president's home and, 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 and you know raiding and finding all this stuff. That's something that's new. They they've never done that before until they did it to Trump. And now since they did it to Trump, then you know Trump has got his uh his his uh, cronies, his followers, and his henchmen. They going after Biden. any everybody. Yeah, and Biden is number one. Okay, yeah. Right. Washington, Washington President Biden said Thursday he was no has no regret about keeping the discovery of mishandled classified documents dating to his vice presidency under wraps until after last year of midterms. Uh, 
point said, blank. The like I said, of, uh, documents with classified markings was found November the second, six days before the election, inside a DC office Biden used after he left the Obama administration. But the unearthing was kept under wraps until CBS News broke the story on January night. Uh, Biden scold, uh, scolded a female reporter who asked him about the controversy during a trip to tour to uh during a trip to tour storm damage in California. What a quite frankly uh fr frankly bugs me is that we have a serious problem here. We we're talking about Biden said we we're talking about what's going on and the American people don't quite understand why you don't ask me questions about that. I guess that's what Biden said. You know, mm -hmm. I, I apologize for my reading and just start going off a little bit, y'all. I'm sorry. I, that's right. Uh, Biden, Biden didn't ask for the reporter to repeat her question about whether he regretted uh, concealing the information from the public until uh, ballots were cast before launching into another uh, uh, repair. What is that? Another repair. I don't even know how to pronounce that, man. I'm sorry. I ain't finna read all that, man. I'm 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 done because I sound stupid at the moment. I apologize, y'all. Go ahead. Well, like I said, this is something, man, that's been going on forever. They know. One thing about politics, man, politics is a dirty business. And that's no question about that. It's a dirty business. Most of the individuals who make it in politics, they have dirt on the other. And they make deals with each other. You do this, I'll do that. One hand washes the other. It is a, it is a wicked business. And that's a known fact. Because a lot of times they compromise, uh, politicians compromise. They, they uh, turn the blind eye to corruption and stuff to a certain point. No type stuff. You know, yeah, and then, then you know, here's, here's the thing. When the time comes, they're ready to pull that envelope out. This is the way politics has been going on forever. Even, even uh, I'll go back to something that most people probably would, would, would frown at. But there is a, a movie, uh, The Mac, Goldie. Yeah. Well, what Goldie did. The boy put the in the trunk with the mice. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but check this out. How did Goldie get them cops to leave him alone? A uh, blackmail. Exactly. I got the dirt on you. So get get off my case. Yeah, turkey. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't remember all the words, but I remembered, you know, the scene and I remember how he made them back up. This is the way politics go. Trust me. I've been dealing with it for for a few years. You know, ran a few campaigns and have a few uh, uh, acquaintances. I won't say they're my partners or my friends, but acquaintances that are, are in the political world. And that's the way it is run. Dirt. They hold dirt. Just like they forgot all about Hillary. See, everybody tried to to act like Hillary was so great. Hillary wasn't all as great as they were trying to make her be. Right. And she did some wicked stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. Uh, yeah, that's why people didn't. Uh, yeah, she didn't make it. Yeah, that's why people. Yeah, people know. People know she had that. Uh, they say she had to didn't do with a lot of people getting killed and murdered and everything. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause, see, look. Alleged, the house. Allegedly, I guess you know. I don't know, man. Well, here's the thing. When when they was coming after her and, and all that with the white water thing, the scam that they had going on in Arkansas where they were selling people back land and no access to their property. Mm -hmm. When they when they was bringing charges, uh, trying to get against her, the star witness come up dead. He all of a sudden decided he wasn't going to be a witness no more and he's going to kill himself. Come on, man. Then this woman went over in there in Benghazi when she was she was uh, Secretary of State, the third person in, in, in the role for the leadership of the country. Or, you know, the president, vice president, the secretary of state. Okay? Third person. When the dude got messed up over there and got killed in Benghazi, 
they gave false talking points to Anita Hill, the black woman who came out and started talking. And she spoke on those false talking points. So everybody persecuted her in the media and in everything. Okay. Clinton wouldn't bring her butt out. She wouldn't make no statement. Mm -hmm. Then when she finally come out, she come out talking about she's going to resign from being the Secretary of State because she's having some brain problems. Yeah. Okay. Now, after she after she stepped back for a minute and decided, okay, now I want to be president, she come out. What happened to your brain problems? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They caused you to step down from the third position, but now you want the first position. <laughs> you trip. Mm-hmm. You trip. Trip and trip. But you gonna have brain you gonna have brain problems when you go in and screw up some more stuff in the presidency. Okay, and when you get screwed up, you, you got brain problems. Yeah, you got a serious brain problem. You don't need to be in office. Bottom line. And you got a whole bunch of them like that. A lot of them old, senile. They don't know what the heck they do. Here's the thing. I would vote for a Congress or a group of politicians that can pass a bill. What's wrong with these people, man, that can't pass no bills? If you hired me, to be your producer or your writer or whatever, and I can't produce nothing, and I can't write nothing. I'm always coming to a point where, where we ready to shut down because I can't do what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm getting paid to do. And I've been in this office for I don't know how many years. It's time for you to go. Simple as that, bye. You can't pass me. I'm like this. If a politician get in there and these groups, they can't pass the bill. And then when pass the time, bye. We'll get somebody else in here that can. Okay? Bottom line. But it don't work like that. They still get paid to do nothing. To sit up there and blame each other. Oh, they're not going to do it. We're not going to vote for this. We're not. That's garbage. <laughs> That's garbage. That's true. I don't support no particular party wholeheartedly. Yeah, they try to break us up and make a party all y'all want. Party, 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 party. Yeah, but well, see, here's the thing. You know, it's just like telling you you're going to be a crip or a blood. You're either going to go blue or red. Yep, yeah, that's basically what it is. You're going to, which game you joining, baby? You know exactly. You voting Republican or you voting Republican? <laughs> Democrat. <laughs> yeah. See, that's yeah. how much I don't even, I couldn't even get it right out. I understand. But here, yeah. let, me, let me let you in on something. This, this inspired me to let go of that that uh, party loyalty crap that, that we get brainwashed with. There was a brother by the name of uh, Tony Brown. Hold that stop. Okay. Yeah, we back, we back. Yeah. As I was saying, there was a brother by the name Tony Brown. He used to have a show on uh, PBX on Sundays. On you know, channel, I, on what? TBS? PBS. Oh. Yeah, Public Broadcasting Service on Channel 9. Black you know, that has... Black brother? Huh? Black man? Yes, sir. His name uh, was William, Tony... William, William Anthony Tony Brown is an American journalist, academy, academy and businessman. He is the best known as a commentator for the long-running syndicate uh, television show, Tony Brown's Journal. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Like now, books out and stuff. Now, he made, he made a, a profound statement that stuck with me. See, Tony Brown is a Republican. And he came out and he, he professed that. And he says, you know... I am a Republican because I believe in some of the Republican, a lot of the Republican views and values. However, I am not in the Republican Party simply because when they were planning the party, we weren't invited. Okay, so why are you going to support somebody that don't even uh, uh, invite you to the party? You're a party crasher. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you want to be in the group, but they ain't, they ain't inviting you. That's true. So that, that brought something to to my mind. Why would I support someone who's not including me? 
Why would I go try and steady knock on their door and begging them to let me in and be a part when they don't want me there? I can go over here and create my own party. That way I'm invited. That way I, I can have a say. I can party too. Toss my little drink up in there. You know? But you didn't invite me to that party, so why would I want to be in it? Why would I support it? A lot of black lies, a lot of white lies. That's what uh, Mr. Tony Brown say. Yes. I, I used to listen to that, that show religiously every Sunday. That and the McLaughlin group. There was a few other ones. The McLaughlin group was a big group of, of people. And I used to like uh, the McLaughlin guy at the end. He'll say, that's all, folks. Bye, bye. That was his <laughs> signature to his show. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gotta, y'all gotta pay us for all these uh, imitations. Pay us for the imitations. But anyway, uh, bring a light to y'all, man. Shine a light on you. Yeah, this was a group uh, of major journalists, reporters from the major uh, uh, distributors, uh, like uh, the Washington Post, and you know all that stuff, like you know, big time journalists. And they sat around a table and they discussed world issues such as what we're doing. You know, he would have the topics, he'll bring them up, and he'll let each person speak a certain amount of time. He may speak, and then he may cut them off. But this is this is this is the, the, the forum that we used to to use. We called them talk shows back then, you know, because they were talk shows. But now, you know, everybody's moving toward this podcast title and things like that. But it was just basically talk shows. They had several of them. You know, uh, most people were looking at like uh, um, Oprah and uh, Montel Jones and things of that na nature. And it had, we have made a transition into strictly uh, podcasts, talk radio, things of that nature, which I think, in some ways, is better because uh, if you if you're driving or if you're just tired of the matrix of being tied into the television program, then you want to deprogram, then that means you have to turn that sucker off and do something different. Because most of our people are programmed. We believe we believe that what's going on on that television program is what's real. And it's not. It's like I was having a conversation with, with uh, a person uh, discussing most of the uh, reality shows and the shows that are on television are scripted. They may not, The whole thing may not be scripted, but they have to follow a specific script. They don't allow nobody just to go willy-nilly how they want to go on one of those shows and do what they want to do. It doesn't happen that way. Because if they did, they'll have anybody on there doing anything they want to do. And then they'll kill their show. Even even with the uh, uh, news, any news and all that, it has to go up. The reporter only writes his story. He can't put it out unless he owns the publishing company. All he can do is write the story. He has to submit it. And then those who are at the top, they determine whether it's going to come out or not. That's why you have a lot of individuals got off of those major uh, broadcasting stations and went and did their own thing. Because had they not done their own thing, they would only be able to speak okay. to what they've been given permission to. Right. They don't get cut. So it's scripted. That is scripted. Y'all yeah, gotta understand it ain't nothing but a lot of advertisement and a lot of uh, mind mind control on the slide. Exactly. Programming. You know what I'm saying? Programming. Uh, and people been doing that for a long time. I remember uh, looking at uh, how uh, Kim Jong Un, Kim Jong Un was over there uh, in North Korea doing his thing. I remember looking at a documentary a long time ago about uh how he was over there and like everywhere you go man you will see his face he was he was the movie star he was the telephone man he was the his voice was on everything his picture was everywhere you know he was the god you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh and and it was like uh that was 
that was programming on, on a massive scale, on a massive scale of human beings. <laughs> When they look at uh, shows and shit, come on, it's him, you know what I'm saying? He had a beautiful army and everything. They still got it going on with his son, but I'm talking about the the, the father and shit, you know. I remember looking at his documentary and shit back in the day. Excuse my friends, I remember looking at looking at that. And, uh, yeah, the History Channel used to be pretty cool back in the day. I used to look at it a lot. But, yeah. yeah. But I look at how that, that massive scale of mind control was uh, implemented, uh, implanted in the people's brain and... Uh, and in her soul and even up to this time right now, you know, you know That advertisement that that I, That programming that brainwashing whatever you want to call it is all the same to me uh -huh. Put it on your mind, whatever, you know, you see too much of something is how it is. It's how it is with music They play it so many times you get hooked to it even when you can unconsciously know a song and don't even know you know the dang on song you're like, how I'm singing that song? Yeah, because you heard so much, you just know the song. You know the words and everything, and unconsciously. Yeah. Yeah. And that explains how some guys can't get a GED, but they know every rap song word for word, verbatim. Now hold on, man. If you can memorize that, you can memorize that little work. You know, a little education. But they will tell you quick. No, oh, man, I can't. I ain't with that. But you learn every rap song that come on the radio, and you can do it. You can do it by memory. You can do it without the music. But you can't pass a GED. Come on, let's think about that. You've been programmed to think that this is what it is. I understand that rap, the metaphors, and all that stuff is clever. And there's some are spitting knowledge. I know this. And I recognize that. And I give a big props to those who are doing that. But the individual who can't make it in life. And you spend your time learning all these raps. But you can't produce nothing. You can't even fill out your, an application. That That's ridiculous. That's being... Mm -hmm. Being programmed. Being programmed, excuse me. That's facts, man. You know, uh, I was telling one of my friends, he like he just was laughing and stuff. And I, he, and I said, yeah, some brothers can't read. I said, you know, since I'm putting the book out, you know, the, the, the book out, I got the audio book. And uh, so since I'm putting the book out, he was like saying, like, a lot of brothers can't, I was telling him a lot of brothers can't read. That's the reason I'm putting it out so they can hear it. And uh, putting visual to it, he's like, they can't read. And I'm like, hell no, a lot of people can't read, can't spell, can't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? So I say, you know, but shout out to them, you know. Uh, they'll get, hopefully, hopefully they get it together. And hopefully, I, uh, seeing all that, the stuff we put out in, in the earth, hopefully it manifests to something, you know. Yeah, I mean, and basically, they, they oh. Saying, cause we trying to teach her, we're trying to teach as much as we can, you know, and that's all we can do. All we can do is put it out there. We, uh, hopefully we, we uh, spark an interest, spark the flame within them. To seek more, uh, not necessarily being discontent with who you are, because you got to be content with who you are first, and then accept where you are. Then maybe you can move forward. That's facts. But long as we hate ourselves, we we'll dummy ourselves down. We'd be like we were talking about the, the fleas, the jumping fleas. We will not reach our fullest potential, our highest potential, as long as we allow. Stigmas, uh, negative self-talk, stuff like that. Yeah, man. It hinders, blocks us. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah, man, I, wanna, I wanna talk, uh, I know I wanna talk about, uh, talk to, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Sykes, man, about, you know, uh, he got a story to tell, you know, he a legend from, uh, from St. Louis, moved out of Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, got himself together. You know, we gonna talk to him. He got a he got a crazy story to tell, man. Uh, a lot, of, hey, lot, lot of history. Uh, yeah, he been listening to the podcast, so yeah. And uh, That's cool. he, he wanna talk to us and talk with us too. But I know, uh, you know, we gonna interview him and stuff. So I just wanna let you know that, so we can talk yeah, to him about some stuff. Yeah, let's get him in there. You know, we got like two, three, uh, so far that we wanna do, and uh, we'll start putting it out. Uh, 
before we interview them so maybe people come on to hear what they have to say because these are influential people these are people who have transformed their life yeah that's what it's about you know and, and this is what we're looking for we're looking to inspire build some unity so we can help teach another mm -hmm. how to transform their life that's the goal man not really to turn out really to turn up uh you know i'm just really tired of the uh this new, I'm, you know, I, I love all the artists, and I don't, I don't know if I, let me not even use that word. You know what I'm saying I, I like to see them doing what they doing, and I do have love for people because I'm just a, that type of person. But uh, I love to see people shining and getting money and doing whatever they doing. But I don't like stupidity, man. You know, the world need to, the world need to, uh, you know, calm down on the stupidity. The entertainment is cool, but the stupidity is just like out this world. Let's please stop being. Let's 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 stop embracing just super duper stupidity. I mean, there's some funny stuff happening, and you got it on tape, or you're taping it, you're making. That's fine, but some of this stuff is outrageous, man. Like around the, the world. world, that's why I'm talking about the world. I'm kind of jumping from here to there, but the world. I'm sorry. Is well, one thing I know about the world that we know today is in a transformation stage. Yeah. And and just like we had discussed a little earlier about the lunar cycle, this is the lunar new year. So a whole bunch of seen and unseen things are going on. And anybody who claims not to believe in the unseen, I have a solution for them. You want to hear the solution? Yes, sir. I want to hear the solution. All right. If you don't believe in the unseen, let me take a plastic bag and put it over your head and tie a little thing around it, and you're going to believe in oxygen that you cannot see. Hmm. Oh <laughs> what you think? You're going to believe in oxygen that you cannot see. Now, if that ain't cold-blooded, boy, I don't know what to say. <laughs> the I'm just putting it out there. That's the God on his truth, boy. That's crazy. Yes, sir. That's the truth, though, man. That's hard. You're going to believe in it. You're going to believe in it. You, and you can't it. see it. You can't see it at all. <laughs> man, that's a cold blooded line right there. I think you need to repeat that, man. <laughs> I, it got, I had to catch my that, That's a cold blooded one right there. Yeah, you had to think about it for a second. What are you talking about? But really, yeah. people who don't believe in the unseen, let me put a plastic bag over your head and tie it up. You believe in the unseen oxygen that you need to breathe. Yeah, we outside, man, with this. And cutting down trees, blowing leaves, you know what I'm saying? Kicking it with the birds and the bees. So, uh, it's, it's real talk, y'all. You know, uh, we having real conversations about the world, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was looking at this man the other day, man. Uh, came across, uh, the brothers, uh, Billy. You know, you know what I'm talking about, Billy? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. From Earn Your Well, I can't say from Earn Your Leisure, but that's why the first time I seen him shout out Earn Your Leisure. Shout out to, like you said, uh, 19 Keys and all them. and uh, but, uh, mm -hmm. Billy, Billy Carson, uh, you know, yeah. he got his own network show. I think he's called like 4K or something, something like that. Something got, like that, yeah. For being knowledge or something yeah. like that. Yeah, but he got, he, got a, he got a black brother on there that, that, uh, that only be talking about uh, UFOs and stuff and, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. He kind of like an extraterrestrial guy. And, yeah. And, uh, that's, all, that's all he like to talk about is the... Uh, the UFOs and all that, and uh, on his station, he had a he had a brother on there who was a preacher, mm -hmm. and the preacher said he was a preacher of like eleven churches. Oh yeah, he was a he was a bishop. Yeah, That's he, a bishop. Yeah, he ran eleven churches. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, uh, stop uh, doing the preaching, and he left the pool pit because that's what the a title was like saying something like that. He left the pool pit because. Because the brothers, uh, because he found out, you know, some real information. So, like, he got, basically, I'm trying to sum up, he got, like, 20 Bibles or something. Oh, it's kind of weird. I can't even, you know, he got, like, 20 Bibles, Unc. So, uh, what do you know about these 20 Bibles? He got 20 Bibles, man. Well, let me, let me, yeah, he got 20 Bibles, man. I don't want to be capping. I don't want to be stunned, but I'm going to definitely got to find them so I can let you know what it is. So, when you hear the click, you can, I'm looking for them. Yeah, well, for what I know about it is you have versions. You understand? Yeah. By ver you have all these different versions. And each version has something different. It's similar, 
And you can deduce the same meaning out of most of it, but the versions, they change. And one who really, who believes in, in the book, in the scriptures uh, wholeheartedly and don't believe anything has been moved around or what have you, that's a lack of uh, study. Because we know any, any language that has been translated into another language, and then another language, and then another language, okay, some of the meaning is lost, especially when you come from what they call a Semitic language to a bastard language, which we have is English. English is a bastard language. We get most of our words from other, other languages. That's why when you have uh, the spelling bees, oftentimes the, um, the contestant will ask you the origin of the word because people have played with words for so long to where they confuse people this is why you have all these versions and all these different editions and translations and interpretations and interpolations because it's different from uh interpretation and interpolation interpretation is coming straight from from the uh, uh language to interpret into your language but interpolation is when words are put in there right okay. and often people especially those who don't really study the scriptures they just remember they memorize i i call them nursery rhyme scriptures they memorize stuff like uh now i lay me down to sleep i pray the lord my soul to keep and stuff like that and they they remember hearing certain scriptures and they hear it a certain way and they will repeat it in that way as they're reading but they'll read words into it i've experienced this that's why it's some some denominations they have a reader this one person one person who reads excellently and they'll read it and then no, the like, past i don't re i read pretty good but i don't read excellent i always like forget a word or something i can't pronounce it when i can't pronounce it but i just get tongue-tied but i'm practicing on my reading yeah I'll keep reading go ahead that's fine i mean no one is perfect uh and, and and it's 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 not really a bad thing that you you may not be the best reader but to to step up and and read things or put words in something that's not there that you shouldn't do because if you have another group of people around you and they can't read either then they're going to take for granted that what you're saying is true and it's not it's not even in there like you get the people with the, who, who make that statement all the time money is the root of all evil it is not and that's not even what it says you understand what i'm saying so stop the false narrative tell them what it say huh it says the love of money is the root of all evil not the money in itself so yeah. we have to be careful about that. Yeah, so I think you need to tell them again because <laughs> I think I said it the whole wrong way too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of. Right, that's yeah. what. That's what the, the, the scripture says. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. Y'all gotta stop all that. Like myself, we gotta just stop. You gotta take a step back and, and listen. And yeah, man. But this, yeah, uh, this, uh, this guy, his name is. Uh, Bishop Daryl uh, uh, Nicholson. Well, how would you say this? N Nicole, uh N I C H O L L S. Nichols? Nichols. Okay. Think Nichols. Yeah, N I C H O L L S. Bishop Daryl Nichols. Oh, Nichols. Yeah. Nichols. So mm -hmm. he, that's the, uh, he was saying the church bishop depart the pulpit after discovering the truth about. Aliens. I told you we were talking about the world. I know I threw you off mm -hmm. with that one. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, the church has been hushing up the truth about aliens for years. But one of the brave bishops had enough, had had enough. He decided to leave the pulpit and speak out about what he knows, that aliens are real. They are coming for us all. <laughs> yeah, so, so, but before we go any farther right there, uh, YouTube don't. Well, I don't know who on YouTube, man. I need to figure out who on YouTube. But yeah, YouTube, you don't flag me, man, about this. But 
Yeah, some uh, you know, they got a, some gay dude uh, is a, a preacher, and he got the pulpit and everything, man. He was dressed up in a dress. I seen that on some dude's uh, channel. I don't want to lie, would have shot the dude out. But I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. And uh, and uh, but he showed it on his channel. His channel is very successful. I was just looking at it, man. I don't want to cap. I'm gonna figure it out. And I'm gonna post the name right here. Okay, you see the name. I post the dude name right here, and then I'm gonna say it again. And then uh, once I find his name, I'm gonna say it again. Okay, so anyway, but yeah, he showed me that, and I and on his video, and I was like, so I couldn't believe that, man. But yeah, so this preacher name is uh, Mr. Daryl Bishop, man. And what you think about this, man? You know, what I'm saying he, he talking about the the uh, the emerald tablets. He talking about uh, mm -hmm. you know he talking about the healing. He talking about going outside of the bible that's what the one i really was uh thinking about uh his ufo story uh mm -hmm. the role of the church bishop you know that's what he did so which one of them you want to uh, pick you pick one of them you want to you want to pick the uh how you became a church bishop or do you want to hear the role of the church bishops which one boom, 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 boom. let's try I, okay let's see. i i know the role <laughs> she know we've been dealing with the church okay, so i want you to see her a little bit. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, we're going to get back to that in just a few minutes. So, take us back to you were in the military. How did you get towards. See, see he was in the military too. I mean, what? of a church, of many churches. Yeah. Well, after I got out of the military, um, I was logistics primarily. And so I decided to move to the area of the Midwest where, you know, they make cars. Everybody always moved to the Midwest. You heard that? Yes. And tanks, things tank automotive command. So I ended up in the Ohio, Michigan area. And uh, I was just doing my thing. I was just working and um, just doing my thing, you know, until uh, really it's a strange transition. But I was living in Defiance, Ohio. And uh, there was a KKK rally that came to town. And he said the KKK rally came to, came to town on them. So you already know, but he, but hey, but this guy, he was, he was a guy in the army. He, he did a lot. He was, what, man, this dude is, this is awesome, but I don't know what's going on right now. DARPA, and he's been involved with some, uh, I call him a, a Jedi Knight, a secret scoop, scoop program. Um, well, we're going to get back to that in just a few minutes. So... That's where the wheels kind of got rolling um, because I, I, I just needed to have more advocacy and I wanted to get into the communities to teach people so I can get in front of kids to say that, you know, this isn't so. Mm -hmm. But that led me to a relationship with my church. I never wanted to be in ministry ever. I, 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 that wasn't an ambition. I did want to combat racism, hate, prejudice. You know, when I listen to this man, he remind me of you. Oh, really? Yeah, I ain't, I ain't gonna even lie, so... But we're not gonna get too deep off into this. But I I do want to get deep off into it because I I would have we'd be her listening to this whole story because I'm gonna send you this story and uh because I'm and I'm gonna plug it and show y'all what he looked like and everything. So I'm make sure I have this video, man, because this is real deal Holyfield stuff. But he was talking about the aliens and all that. He talking about everything. But he got 11 churches. He was talking about all them books he had. Uh, he was talking about all of those books that he had. He got like 50 minutes worth of that. This video is like two hours long. But he was talking about all those books that he had, and I really want you to hear about that. So I'm going to have to figure out how to be able to get that to y'all so I can have the exact parts. A good friend, my uh, my, my but, Dogon initiate friend, who was trained by a, a high-level, very brilliant spiritual teacher, Master Nava, uh, who was educated in the Temples of Thebes, and he went through all of that. Uh, just impressive. They have five centers in the United States, five earth centers, where they teach this lost ancient comedic knowledge. You know about that? Ancient committed knowledge. Remember, we were talking about Egypt was not Egypt. That is a, a Greek word. Right. He said committed. Right. And what he what he's doing is he's going back way back before we got the Greek knowledge. Right. Okay. okay. Let me see. Compelled when I heard him speak the first time. Uh, within the next six months, I went to three visit three of the Earth centers just to see it for myself. And this is lost committed knowledge that. We haven't had for 2,500 years mm. when the uh, Egyptian Empire or Egyptian um, dynasties fell in the Pharaonic period. 
Um, the pharaohs basically said, let these fools take what they think is precious. Let them take the, the, the diamonds and the rubies. But he told the priests, the keepers of the knowledge, says, keep that which is most precious from them. And that was the knowledge. Yeah. So you heard that? Right, right. And, and see, here's the thing. We, we discussed a little bit about that back when we were talking about uh, the grave robbers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when they went over there, when they went over there, they went to take everything they could and they took a whole bunch of knowledge and they, some they couldn't get because some of those uh, orders went underground you follow me they would not practice they would not put out certain words they would not let certain people know it's, it's, a, it's a concept of secrecy okay mm -hmm. um, and later on probably in some of our, our podcasts we'll talk about some of these things but you know, it's a secret knowledge. You got those secret orders. I'll put it like that. Secret yeah. order. Yeah, we outside with it, man. Y'all heard the wood getting cut because it's getting heated, man. The yeah. Fire. yeah. Yeah. We have secret orders. And they keep that knowledge. And the only way you find it is if you become an adept. If you become uh, into their secret order. That knowledge. And then it's going to be veils on that. You're only allowed to learn so much at certain times. And then you advance and you reach a certain degree of knowledge. Now you're awarded. Okay? But you're not going to get it all because they would not give it all. And in, in terms of aliens, once again, when we deal with semantics and words and stuff like that, we have to understand that the, the people who come up with the meanings and the terminologies and all this stuff, they change when they want to. A lot of the old words, the original words that we had have changed. Prime example, gay. Remember, gay used to mean happy. Yeah, that's happy, man. Y'all can just take that word and change it. It's happy, dude. Well, they, they're they happy because now they're recognized and everything, okay? So <clears throat> they can take that word, but you cannot use it in the sense in which you use it. I used to use it back when I was a salesperson. You know, I'd see people, hey, well, happy well, I, gay. I ain't going to even lie. I never used it. I never, I never used it like that word. I don't know how to use it. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never, it, it was like how you tell me I used it as a sale person. I ain't never did that before. Well, well, this, this, this is, this was my spiel. Hey, we're happy and gay today. Oh, wow. Now, now check this out. Most of my uh, companions that I hung around with were not understood they were gay me. Because back then, you know, the word, they didn't use the word for uh, the um, LGBTQ uh, uh, community. They they just said they were fags or, or homosexuals or what have you. But then they took the word gay, it sounds better and happy. But that was a general word that was used in the olden days as being happy. You look it up in the dictionary. Now they've, they've, they've uh, upgraded it now. Yeah, they, yeah, they, you know, the, yeah, they, they upgraded. They, they took it off because it said right there. I'm looking at it. It said it got up late, upgraded. Gay is a term that primarily refers to homosexual person or trait or being homosexual. The term originated meant uh, uh, carefree and cheerful. The original, the, they say the original, uh, original meant carefree and uh, cheerful. There we go. That's what I was talking about. There's another, listen, listen to this. An old man said this one time. We were sitting in a group talking. I think I was in Oakland, California at the time. And, you know, how the old men, I love to sit around and listen to the old men talk about how things was and how things are and et cetera. Uh, that's how I learned a lot of stuff. And learned that a lot of stuff was not really true. It was a lot of folklore and male socialization and things of that nature. However, one of the old men said, hey, shoot, man, I'm about ready to go get me some crack now. Nah. Everybody looked at him. <laughs> what, man? You on that stuff, old dude? He said, what you talking about, boy? Ain't nothing better than some crack. Now, back in his day, guess what crack was, nephew? What, a woman? Yes. Right. Sick. I'm going to get me some crack. That's what they used to say. Let's split down the middle. Shout out, to, shout out to the ladies. <laughs> but now, crack is a drug. 
Yeah, man, it, it, it's a lot, you know. You know, it's almost like when gangs had the same exact name. I had, you know, you kind of use that, you know, uh, the dumb it down there had the same type of name, you know what I'm saying, from different cities and stuff. Uh, you know, they were they yeah. they were because uh, I, I remember back in the day, the Crips in St. Louis, the game man, Crips in St. Louis used to wear their hats to the right and the Bloods used to wear their hats to the left. But when mm-hmm. I, I heard the culture of, uh, like, uh, L.A., they were saying the Crips wore their hats to the, uh, to the left and they, they rags in the left pocket, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, I'm like, that's crazy, but yeah. And then you had you had you had people in St. Louis claiming grapes. Right. Is there a grape street in St. Louis? No. <laughs> but, but 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 it's a lot of grape grape street cats in St. Okay, Louis. Okay, I understand. Mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm not speaking against them. I'm just saying that there's no grape street. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. Okay. But they use term. It's, it's a trip, but that's the way it is. You know, words, and then there are other words. We go through words, you get words that just, they stop using. And then you have words that they change the meaning. Yeah, that's true. So, this one young brother, he was a 5 percenter. If, if those who don't know, the 5% nation, they, they offspring from the nation of Islam. Mm-hmm. And this one brother, he said, uh, he said, words really don't have a meaning. Because you can take a word and put your own meaning on it. That's what it is now. <laughs> and he had a point. When you see it, right now, with the example we just had, you put your own meaning on, on the words. Yeah, like EDM, the new movie coming out soon. Yeah. But yeah, he, uh, but let me, let me hit, let you hear something. Three times. And the fourth time it was coming back around. I want you to hear his UFO story, man. Mm-hmm. I want you to hear it because yeah. he said he, he, this when he got fame. I mean, this no, he was. A, I want you to hear it. Hold on. Uh, I'll share it with you, and I'll share it with the audience here. And uh, if my family's listening, I wish they would just maybe chime in. But when I was 16, driving from my great uncle's home, um, driving along the main highway in Leavenworth, I kept seeing this light, very low light, flying over the Missouri River, parallel to where I was traveling. Maybe an hour. My- Hold on. Make sure he had uh, again. And over the period of the next 45 minutes or so, it circled way up in the sky, but it circled around maybe three times. And the fourth time it was coming back around, I went into the house and I grabbed my father, my mother, uh, my sister was there, and my older brother. And I got, they came outside just to humor me, you know, because they didn't know what to expect. But there it was. We saw a UFO. So, yeah, but he's saying it. Uh, that he saw it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he said they all saw it, but this is the part I want you to hear, though. And this time, instead, it changed its path, so instead of flying like a big, long arc around, just miles away, but this time, it actually dropped in elevation, and it flew directly over our head, maybe maybe 250 feet up, maybe five miles an hour. My mother got so nervous, she went, she tried to grab an Instamatic camera, she couldn't, she was, couldn't even get the flash on it. My dad called the police and filed a police report. Um, he sat out in the squad car and filed a police report, and the police had me dry diagrams of what I had seen. And it was all over the front page news the following day in Leavenworth, Kansas, through a boat sighting over Leavenworth. So, so, yeah, that was his experience with it. And he said, Can't, you know, well, you heard what he said. I don't got to repeat it. But so that happened. That actually happened to me, me and uh, my brother uh, Marvin P. And, uh, we was traveling, coming from uh, down 70 Highway, and uh, I start I start seeing it over the airport, and so I thought I was tripping at first. So I'm like, yeah, maybe it's the sun ray following my eyeballs or something. And it was just like really, just like racing, like really, like fast. I'm like, man, look at this thing just following us. And mm-hmm. at first, I didn't think it was following us, and I'm like, okay, well maybe this thing is following us. And man, hey, this is my story, and, and it's the real deal. And uh, so I got uh, so once we got off of, uh, 70 Highway going uh, going towards uh the shop, going down uh going towards uh uh what's that? Once we got off the highway, we was going you know we was going going towards the shop, going towards Natural Bridge. I apologize, right there towards the Army base. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, Job Corps. That's what I was trying to get out of my head. Job Corps. Once we passed Job Corps up and we you know, went on down, I stopped seeing it for a second. And then, like, once I got, once we passed up the Army base, I started seeing it again. I'm like, man, this thing is still following us. 
and uh, we end up getting uh, going to going to our shop on uh, 3400 Goodfellow, and that's when uh, we was able to see it. We was able to see it over the uh, over the Hill Valley Apartments. But yeah, mm -hmm. that was our experience. It was real, bro. It was, it was the, uh, hundreds of them in the sky. They turned to a ball. And it, it's more detailed, but they turned to a ball and flew off into the atmosphere. I'm telling you, I really saw that stuff. And, I, and I'm not the only one saw it. It was like hundreds of us out there saw it. We all was like, what the, is that? Yeah, so yeah, no no cap. No bull stuff, mm -hmm. no faking. Now check this out. I can I can give something just simple and plain to get rid of the spookism that most people have about things like that. Uh, if you go and use the dictionary with the meanings again, and you get the definition of alien, and you get the definition of UFO, it's not the Hollywood. I mean, they got the Hollywood in there, but the basic general meaning? Yeah, un unidentified about, object. Unidentified, right. unidentified flying object. object. Yeah. Unidentified okay. flying object. I'm sorry, there you go. Right. So yeah. now you have an unidentified flying object. That's any object that you cannot identify that's flying up in the sky. Type Period. Type, it, doesn't, it. it doesn't necessarily mean it's no little green mean with funny right. looking I eyes. Never, I, yeah, I never oh. said I never said that part. Nope. I know. Don't mean I know. That's what I'm saying. So that, that gets rid of the, the, the spookism that, that Hollywood puts on this. Okay, and if you look at alien, what is an alien? Well, I don't know. An alien is just somebody from a different place. Oh, yeah, facts. Oh, well, that's, well, that's what they say. But I, <laughs> see, I see people down here that I, uh, well, now, and it's not to make a fun of nobody, but I see people on, on uh, TikTok and stuff that, they went through stuff or either born like this and they look like stuff that I used to see in the uh, in the movies that they are uh, Im uh, you know imitating the movies in the scary movies because you know I'm a scary movie man so I like to like watch scary movies so I just seen but now I just seen real human beings that kind of look like this it's like it's a dude on TikTok who straight turned his whole body into a uh, into a reptile I'm talking about he really did this yeah, called a black absolutely. reptile a black man or whatever dude is weird but shout out to him man maybe I can use him in my movie <laughs> yeah, maybe you can. He got three fingers. But, he cut his fingers off and everything. This is real people, dude. So it's like, yeah, yeah. that's alien, though. That's alien. That's stuff you've never seen before. So that's alien. It's alien. I mean, you think about it. They call the Mexicans aliens over here, right? Yeah, an alien. Yeah, illegal they call alien. Illegal. We aliens okay. to some people. Shit. That's what I'm saying. So. So, yeah. We don't have to always go to the spookism to understand that an alien is someone from a foreign place or something from a foreign place or different from your norm or what have you. It's alien. Yeah. Okay? So, so, and yeah. then the unidentified flying objects. And if you look at the technology today, they're only releasing a certain amount in pieces and parts. Yeah, but do you got? But you know, you got the. Uh... But you know, well, it is a lot of stuff on the earth, though. We already got talking birds, man, and that's and that's really simple for real. It, I, mean, remember, I remember back in the day, that would sound like it was uh, oh, a, a talking parrot. That's like that's low. That's like nothing. You know, you look at your animals. Your animals are really smart, and so it's like it's like I I, I really believe all of this stuff that I've seen already, even through cartoon. I believe everything, man. I believe in reptilians. I believe in everything, even though I haven't seen it. I believe all of it. I believe all of it because there's some truth in everything that you try to imitate, man. You know, all our brains ain't scratched that far, bro. We seeing shit. And, and, and uh, like they try to show, uh, they just try to show, I apologize, they just try to show, uh, what you call it, uh, another planet. Talking about they found another planet with water on it. Dude, look at her. That planet been there. And you yeah. know it. You know it. Y'all know it. Y'all been knowing it. And That's the, I'm, I'm going to call it the Columbus effect. The reason I'm calling it the Columbus effect because Columbus discovered America, but it was already discovered. He, you know, was there, but he discovered it according to them. Right. So that's the Columbus effect. They, All the stuff that's so, been here. So what's the century. name of this? T. Uh, we we they say they call it T O I seven hundred E. T O I seven hundred E. Question: What is the newly discovered planet called? Answer: The newly discovered planet is called T O I seven hundred E. NASA discovers the Earth-like planet. 
Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Habitat and Zone. Billionaire Elon Musk wants humanity to inhabit other planets like by 2050, with Mars currently being on his radar. On the other hand, environmental lists are constantly raising the alarm about the global warming and advocated for the clean energy reduction in carbon emissions while also asking humans to limit earth uh exploit uh, exploitation exploration explorations earth, okay asking humans to limit earth's uh explor uh Exploitation, man, rat, raising global temperatures, melting ice, cap, uh, rising water levels, and raging wildfires are making many people, bes besides Elon, wonder: uh, Will life be sustainable on Earth in 50 years? While we lack the uh, foresight to uh, properly answer the question, we do know one thing: the rapid advancement in technology give us hope about the limitless uh, possibilities of humanity can achieve. Case in point. You know what I'm saying? The recent discovery of this planet is habitable zone has surely amazed people. However, before you go wild with theories and uh, predictions about what this means for the future, let's take a detailed look at the National uh, Astronomers and Space Administration. NASA is saying about it first. I should have just said NASA, man. Trying to read all these words, man. Yeah, but new planet. What you think about that? I mean, th that's just information that they decide they want to put out now. Right, man. It's been there, man. It been there. Nothing new. Ain't none of it new. What is it called? Nothing. Hold on, hold on. Idiom. Nothing new under the sun. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing yeah. new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. They want to be because think about it. With the technology we have today, look at drones. Look at stealth uh, hornets and stuff. You ever saw one of them uh, hornets, them stealth uh, planes? Yeah, I saw one in person. In, I, I in they beautiful. They they look alien. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm saying in in their operation. No, nah, but I I saw them okay. up close. Let me give you an example. Uh, we went to the VP fair, and hopefully we'll talk about that one day. But anyway, <clears throat> we went to the VP fair. And the uh, announcer began to announce that one of those hornet stealth things was coming, and he was at Jefferson and Olive. Okay, by the time he got through saying Jefferson and Olive, that thing was on the riverfront, above the oh, above the river, stopped in midair. Okay, then it went down a little bit, it went up, it tilted left and right, it went back and jetted off. <laughs> Okay. Mm -hmm. Where did they get that technology? That's alien. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Now you look at a drone. Look how the drone move. Where did that technology come from? It's all. You know, I just watched a young brother uh, create. Uh, when y'all heard the clicks, that mean we working. Uh, so anyway, uh, I think the young brother he uh, created a uh, on TikTok. He created his own gas man out of plastic i mean i've seen this before uh but he was on tiktok and people were like man you better hide that little young black brother man he created gas on tiktok and he, and, uh, he, and he put it and he, he made it out of plastic and he put it in his little weed whacker and yeah and it started right up he's showing people yeah little dude man look man if you study chemistry you study the planets in the uh, uh, periodic table and the elements, you'll be amazed at what could be done without spending all your money to these other people that's in the made uh, a gadget. You know, you can take a light bulb, two spark plugs, a coil of wire, a magnet. And you won't need no electricity to, to, to light that bulb up. Right. Yeah. Man, that's a lot of information being gone. That's that's crazy, man. That's that's what I'm saying. Talk this this segment, man, talking about the world is real deep. And we finna get up out of here, man, because we've been going so hard. We about yeah. one hour. A lot of information. There's a lot of information because this is the world, man. Man, what do we call this podcast, man? 
this is the inevitable return to butter. Oh, yes. Peace. 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 Inevitable return to butter.